In the, in the past decade, uh, uh, medical students in some countries were, were very active, so I can tell you uh, good stories uh, about that. Good morning, my name is uh, Paul Schaeffer. Um, I did a PhD in Sciences of Education on how could medical students uh, be prepared to face the marketing strategies of the pharmaceutical industries and finished that in uh, 2017. And in parallel, I was active uh, in Formandep. Formandep uh, is an association of uh, healthcare professionals, citizens uh, who are dealing with conflict uh, of interest in health. And I was especially active in this question of medical education. So I'm very glad to answer you this question of uh, how could medical students be, uh, be active on this issue of conflict of interest in medical education. And uh, in, the, in the past decade, uh, uh, medical students in some countries were, were very active. So I can tell you uh, good stories about that, good examples. Uh, for instance, uh, in the United States of America, uh, where it begins, it, uh, it began in, um, in 2007 with the American Medical Student Association, uh, the AMSA, uh, which launched uh, the AMSA Farm Free uh, campaign. Uh, his name uh, nowadays is Just Medicine campaign. And the goal was to, to, to get rid of, of uh, the industry uh, presence and influence in the medical education in the United States. And uh, what they did is uh, really interesting. They, um, they, uh, they did a scorecard of all uh, medical schools in the United States uh, about the, the conflict of interest policies of these uh, medical schools uh, with uh, different criteria, if the, the medical students receive gifts, if they are trained uh, in the curriculum about these issues, if uh, there is a, a transparency uh, on, uh, on these issues uh, from, the, from the faculty, uh, and from the institution of medical schools, uh, all this question appears in the in the in the scorecard. And at the beginning, in two thousand seven, uh, no medical school received a, a good mark. They they all received F, which was the the worst ones. And uh, they uh, it, and they get uh, uh, a good media coverage uh, about that. And uh, so they uh, they did this scorecard every year after that. And so the, the medical schools uh, uh, changed their, their habits and they, uh, they, um, they wrote a, a conflict of interest policy to protect the, the medical students of uh, the exposure uh, with the, these marketing strategies and also to prepare them to be more independent. Uh, and so in 2015 or 14, uh, two thirds of the U.S. medical schools had the best grades, so A or B. So uh, in last uh, last um, ten years, uh, it changed a lot. And uh, one study published in the BMG in 2015, uh, I think, it showed that the young doctors who were coming from uh, medical schools where there was a, a, a strong conflict of interest policy uh, had better habits of uh, prescriptions. So uh, it shows that it can be uh, it can be effective. So that's one of uh, of uh, the actions that the, the medical schools uh, of the the, the the medicine students in the United States uh, did, and uh, they did also very interesting uh, things like uh, an AMSA farm free curriculum. Uh, it's a very it's the best proposal that we have of a complete curriculum integrating this uh, these issues. And, and uh, they are developing five competencies that this curriculum should develop by uh, um, to the to the medical students, and also taking position on of, uh, on, on different questions uh, on uh, whether uh, the industry should also be integrated in the curriculum. It's not uh, not the case for them, and uh, I, I totally agree also with that. Uh, and at which time, uh, uh, which kind of uh, of training should be uh, taught to the to the medical students? All these questions are uh, get, get an answer in this uh, in this very uh, good document. So I really uh, encourage you to to read that. It's the AMSA Farm Free Curriculum. 
Um, and we, we translated it uh, in French uh, for, for us because it was also very, uh, very effective. And um, in France, we, we replicated this uh, farm free campaign. Uh, we did also scorecards, uh, which uh, started really a national campaign around that. The, the National Dean's Conference uh, wrote an ethical charter on this issue, which is a kind of uh, national conflict of interest policy, uh, which was a, a good one. And now uh, all uh, French medical schools uh, have uh, voted it, so it's, uh, it's already a, a good step uh, in the right direction. And now we are working with uh, medical students in France uh, to see if this uh, medical, uh, if, if this ethical uh, charter is applied. So uh, we, we, we are uh, still doing a scorecard, but uh, in a little different ways, way, uh, where we, we don't ask anymore if, uh, if uh, medical schools have, uh, have good uh, conflict of interest policy, but if they apply what they wrote and what they voted. So it's, uh, it's a little different. And we will uh, do our third uh, scorecard this year, as of next year in 2021. And uh, in this ESCOR charter, uh, there is a reference to this AMSA farm free curriculum as the, the way to go uh, to, uh, to organize the teaching. So, so it's also a big reference uh, for us. Uh, and we are very thankful for, for all these activities that the AMSA uh, USA uh, did uh, on, this, on this issue. Um, and, uh, other countries are also doing scorecards. Uh, so the, Gem the German students did one. Uh, in Belgium, there is one who, uh, which will be published at the beginning of 20, uh, 2021. Uh, there is also a project of uh, scorecards uh, in Italy, in the uh, Nordic countries of Europe, uh, maybe in, Sp in Spain, uh, maybe also in Australia. So it's really growing, this, uh, this issue. And medical students are playing a very crucial role uh, so that's one of my, my message for today, because uh, where there was a scorecard, for instance, in Canada or in Australia in, at the beginning of, the, of 2010, uh, there was no big change because uh, medical students were not involved uh, and were not active on this, uh, on this topic. So it's, it makes really a big difference if the medical students community uh, is asking for changes uh, and in the medical schools at national level also. So uh, that's what uh, we can hope for, for, for you in your country and um, uh, following this, uh, these great examples. Um, and uh, that's n other things that you can do uh, is uh, also, of course, uh, um, build the capacity of your community uh, members uh, in your medical schools or at, at national levels in your medical uh, associations, uh, for instance. Uh, you can also create, uh, build a network of stakeholders uh, with, uh, with other people who are working on this question. For instance, I'm belonging uh, to Formandep, which is a kind of no free lunch group, uh, the French no free, no free lunch group. And uh, such, uh, uh, such groups are existing in different countries in the world. Uh, there is an informal international no free lunch network. Uh, and uh, people like us uh, are really... Uh, willing to, uh, to work with medical students uh, on this issue, to create scorecards or to, uh, to make a presentation with medical students. So you, can, uh, you have really allies on this uh, big issue to, uh, uh, to make uh, steps forward. Um, and uh, I think it's really important also to stress that the international medical student community is more and more active also on this issue, uh, like the, the IFMSA, as that you maybe know, the International Federation of Medical Student Association or the EMSA, the European Medical Student Association, both uh, published a policy document in 2019 on this question of medical education and conflict of interest, uh, taking position uh, and asking for changes, uh, um, similar changes uh, that I was speaking uh, about uh, in, in the, just before. And, um, and the uh, IFMSA is also, uh, has also uh, published uh, recently, published recently uh, a toolkit uh, with, uh, uh, with concrete actions that you can do. So uh, you, you will find uh, very uh, references and, uh, and good ideas in these toolkits. Uh, so uh, I really encourage you to, uh, to, uh, to read it and you will find it in the, uh, the IFMSA website. And uh, I was also talking on this issue in, 
Health Action International webinar, uh, and Peter Grubitz did one also on this issue. So you, you will find it uh, in the uh, in the web Health Action International webinar on uh, pharmaceutical promotions. Uh, and uh, there is also this little uh, leaflet of Health Action International uh, fact or fiction, which is really very uh, interesting. Uh, it's uh, it re it's a great resource uh, for you to know. So with all uh, all that, I I hope that you. Uh, you will be uh, uh, you will have the desire to to know more about that and maybe to follow examples of uh, your colleagues and medical students uh, in in these different countries where there there have been uh, really great action and it is continuing and so we are hoping that uh, it will also uh, inspire other medical students. Thank you and uh, good luck.